Hi everyone, it's Mia Hama Sarah Fisher and today's video is about how to deal with grief, death, and the passing of a loved one. This is a topic that has come to my mind because currently my father, my earthly father, he is in the last stage of his life and he has a very short time to live and he's been having a heart condition for a long time and this past year he's had extreme moments where he literally died <laughs> but he came back to life and the doctors even said it was a miracle this was earlier this year and of course Tom and I had prayed for him amongst many others who were praying and he's had these incidences occurring where he would end up in the ICU he would be at that extreme point he would come back and then he would have a few more months and then again another attack and um and this actually happened a few years ago as well but now it's come to a stage where this is it he is going to go and now you would say pray again some people would say that pray again and you know declare that he's healed but you also have to discern the times and in the past i felt that yes i was very motivated for him to pray for him to come back to life and to um to live and to most of all come to know the lord jesus but i would pray for him to come back and um Wow, it's difficult to talk about this. Okay, so let me try this again. Okay, so in the past, I was motivated to pray for his health and for him to, you know, live again. But now the Lord is showing me it's time. It's time for him to go and let go. The reason why it has been difficult is because he's not saved yet. So that has been very much on my mind. Okay, so then I found that in the past couple of weeks that I was getting to a point where it was very hard to focus <laughs> and I would be having sleepless nights and just up all night <laughs> praying to the Lord and this past week it got pretty bad where I just found like grief was taking over and I found it so hard to focus on my studies and my ministry and everything else and then one morning after I felt really trapped by this grief it felt like this black blanket <laughs> this darkness was coming over me and it's so not who I am I live in a very buoyant state of light and Oh and wonder hence the name of my company or oh, in wonder studios and this is really a very foreign foreign feeling and that comes up around my family <laughs> because i just want my father to be saved that's the most important thing to me is for him to know the lord jesus so that's why it was a struggle <laughs> and i had this one night where i felt like this darkness coming over me of grief and mourning and sorrow and I woke up in the morning just crying out to the Lord save him save him and then Tom told me that he had a dream encounter with Jesus and Jesus told him to tell me not to grieve anymore and then when I heard that it was such a relief you know and it showed me this is not how i should be praying i should not be praying with heaviness with sadness and defeat i need to be praying always with the joy of the lord and i know this i know this this is our life and ministry but sometimes i found especially with family it's the enemy is able to trick you <laughs> and when i got that word from tom about jesus telling me mourn no more grieve no more 
I just felt oh, the shackles come off me and this lightness coming returning back to me because you know there's so much I want to do for the Lord there's so much I want to accomplish and it takes focus it means your mind must be free and you've got to be in him the Prince of Peace peaceful and light so I suddenly felt this freedom and I found I in one day I could just focus on my work and just be so much more productive because do you know it's actually selfish to be depressed mm -hmm. it's selfish to be sad it's selfish to wallow in sadness because you're so focused on yourself and what you're going through but what about all those people who need you who are, who the lord has provided for you to serve and they their lives will be so blessed by you but if you're constantly looking within at what you're going through and the grief that could come about as a result of that then nothing happens you're paralyzed and you're not bearing fruit so grief really is i look at it as a sin i honestly do because the fruit of the spirit is joy you know that joy is your strength and he needs us to bring his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven and then when when i heard that word more no more then i remembered wow that's how ezekiel was instructed when the lord told him the desire of his heart would be taken away his wife would die but he would not shed any tears there would be no time for grieving but he would go straight to work and speak to the people of israel that's in ezekiel 24 i'm going to pull it up right now the prophet's wife dies also the word of the lord came to me saying son of man behold i take away from you the desire of your eyes with one stroke yet you shall neither mourn nor weep nor shall your tears run down sigh and silence make no mourning for the dead bind your turban on your head and put your sandals on your feet. Mm. Do not cover your lips and do not eat man's bread of sorrow. So I spoke to the people in the morning and at evening my wife died. And the next morning I did as I was commanded. Ezekiel did not have the luxury of mourning and grieving. Remember, his wife is described as the desire of his heart, so he loved her. So she was taken away, but he had to obey the Lord, not even allow a season of mourning, and go straight into what the Lord was showing him to do. And when I got that word through Tom in his dream, and then I got this word through the scripture, it just set me free because it's a trick of the enemy to keep you in grief if if you have a loved one who's passing on of course you honor their life absolutely but do not allow grief to take over and trick you your period of sorrow and mourning is up to you you decide how long that season will be and praise be to god that he always shows us and he warns us and he he helps us you know and he's shown me to prepare any minute now my dad will pass away and i can talk about this now very calmly because the lord has helped me if i'd spoken it about a week ago it was very tough but now i've accepted it and I know this is his time to pass on. And I believe the Lord will save him because he's got every moment until that time when he sees the Lord Jesus and he's, and he, well, we don't fully know what happens at that moment of death, but he's still got these precious minutes, hours, days. And I am gonna pray with great joy and I'm going to remain in joy and remain in light. And I'm not going to have not even a day of mourning or grief when he does pass away. Because I honor his life, but I'm not going to enter into sadness. 
The Lord needs every one of us and I've got work to do. We have to remain in the joy of the Lord. There are people out there who need you. And the longer you are in grief and sadness and mourning, you cannot see the fulfillment of the destiny that the Lord has for you. So I just want to encourage you, you know, it's merely a decision. Decide at this moment that the season of grief and mourning is over because we have such a wonderful father. He has such wonderful plans. And the past is past. What matters is this moment. Use this moment to be as fruitful as possible so that we can please our Father in heaven. He deserves it. He deserves all of us. And sadness is a trick of, an, of the enemy. Do not fall for it. You're doing no one any good. It's time to break free. It's time to come out of it. And it's time to see that the joy of the Lord will always be your strength. Love you guys. Shalom, and I'll see you next time. Bye.